Hi, my name is Thomas Ortner from the VRV's Research Center in Vienna. I'm mostly working with geospatial data and, this is, and my research is focused on uh, two domains, tunnel monitoring and planetary geology. Today I will focus on the latter and tell you a bit more about Pro3D. Pro3D is short for the Planetary Robotic 3D Viewer. It is an interactive 3D visualization tool to allow planetary scientists to work with high resolution 3D reconstructions of the Martian surface. Where does our data come from? Where do we get these 3D reconstructions from? There are multiple platforms surveying Mars, orbiters and rovers. At the moment, we have five orbiters circling Mars and only one rover on the ground. But fortunately, three more rovers are basically on their way. These rovers are equipped with several instruments, most importantly cameras, as they produce images. These images are then fed into the reconstruction pipeline provided by our partner, Joanneum Research in Graz. The output of this reconstruction pipeline are 3D surfaces. These 3D surfaces are typically large data, high in resolution of geometry and textures, and they occur in multiple scales. Addressing all these challenges, Pro3D can ingest these 3D surfaces and display them together interactively and allow geologists to work with high resolution surface reconstructions of the Martian surface. Here we can see a large scale reconstruction derived from black and white images from the high rise instrument mounted on the Martian Global Surveyor. This 100 gigabyte dataset is too large to fit into main memory or onto the graphics card. Therefore, we have to employ out of core loading and level of detail rendering techniques. The different levels of detail, so the different resolutions of the surface, are indicated by the different colors. With these approaches, we try to re reduce the load on the graphics hardware and constantly compute the trade-off between visual quality and performance. Another high-res reconstruction we can see here of the Victoria Crater. With multiple flyovers of the high-res instrument, our partners in the UK could derive super-res high-res images, leading to these improved reconstructions overlaid here on this setting. Getting in closer, we also have uh, 3D outcrop reconstructions derived from RGB images from the Martian rover. As you can see, the dataset is a bit noisy, but the white baseline algorithm could improve the quality of the results significantly. Now we go over to a very famous data set, another white baseline reconstruction of the Cape Desire outcrop. One can immediately see the different rock layers and as an example we will delineate the contact between the top layer and the next layer interactively. This is a typical geological measurement to determine uh, contacts between rock layers and also determine their orientation. Pro3D allows geologists to perform full outcrop interpretations looking like this. It's quite an exciting time for Martian exploration as there are three more rovers on their way to the surface of Mars. This year, China and the CNSA launched the Tianwen-1 Mars rover, which is scheduled to land in 2021. Also, NASA launched its Perseverance rover, also scheduled to land in 2021. And then unfortunately, the ExoMars rover Rosalind Franklin's launch was rescheduled to launch in 2022. All of these missions have one common objective, objective as they are looking for life on Mars, so-called biosignatures. In this endeavor, geology is an essential science, as geologists, with the help of structural geology and sedimentology, can reconstruct ancient river flows. And where ancient rivers discharge into ancient lakes, there are most promising sites for discovering biosignatures with drilling from rover instruments. Outcrop analysis in geology is typically performed in the field. Unfortunately, we cannot go to Mars right now, so geologists have to rely on remotely captured data from there. As you can see on the right, geologic analysis can be performed on 2D images. But this is rather unsuitable to derive complex 3D data. Therefore, as we have seen before, geologists resort to 
uh, analyzing 3D digital outcrop models. After interpreting an outcrop, geologists want to summarize the different uh, characteristics of an outcrop into a 2D log showing the succession of rock layers, the thickness of rock layers, and the orientation. Doing this for several outcrops, they can create a summary of a whole area, and these logs are then summed up in a correlation panel. These correlation panels are typically manually drawn with vector drawing tools. This is quite time consuming and has many other drawbacks. Therefore, together with our collaborators, from the Imperial College of London, we developed INCOR, an interactive correlation panel as an extension to Pro3D. Our results look very similar to the manually drawn results and we could reduce the time spent in this specific use case from several days to one and a half hours to create a complete correlation analysis. We already made the step from analyzing 2D images to analyzing 3D outcrop models but these 3D outcrop models are still projected onto a 2D screen, so the essential spatial information is partly lost. Therefore, we had the idea to build a Pro3D VR prototype, immersing the geologist in a true 3D environment, with the motivation behind to have an outcrop true to scale and a true feeling of dimension. Also, the enhanced depth perception greatly supports the identification of geological features. We can also add intuitive movement, movement and interaction to walk around the immersive environment and thus create a virtual field trip. This is the stereoscopic rendering of the Garden City dataset and I can unfortunately not immerse you in this experience. You just have to believe me that it's quite amazing. We also added a virtual tape measure which is extremely intuitive and it can measure geological features due to the tracking of the Vive setup down to one millimeter accuracy. Here we can see a geologist immersed on the Martian surface trying to measure the thickness of various rock layers. VR was also shown at the European Planetary Science Conference 2018 in Berlin and was very well received by the public and also by scientists. It seems to be very promising to conduct actual scientific analysis and derive results there and it's also very promising to be used in education of geological training. So, is the VR environment always superior to a desktop environment due to its enhanced depth perception and feel of dimension? It basically feels like a field trip. Problem is, geologists spend days on measuring different uh, geological features and it's not possible to spend several days a week in an immersive environment. People get motion sick. A desktop environment is more suitable for data handling, statistical analysis, and also the correlation analysis we have seen before. You can spend multiple hours with a keyboard and mouse setup at the cost of spatial and depth perception. So as you might have already guessed, combining these two platforms is a great idea uh, and to use the different modalities for the different tasks at hand. This requires a seamless blending between the both modalities to make the switch as effortless as possible. If implemented correctly, these modalities are just different views on the same data. Revisiting our uh, visualization pipeline, we now change the input data to something more terrestrial. Our company partner, Dibit Messtechnik GmbH in Austria, Tyrol, um, uses laser scanners and high resolution cameras to capture tunnel surfaces. This data is then again fed into the reconstruction pipeline by Uranium Research. The output is again 3D surfaces and they are fed into the TSID viewer to support several use cases, such as tunnel surface inspection and documentation, crack annotation analysis, and also geological analysis. The basis of the software is the same as with Pro3D, so we also employ out-of-core loading and level of detail rendering techniques. Due to the nature of the data acquisition, the tunnel also comes in two modalities, in the true 3D spatial form and also in an unrolled form. Once again, different tasks are more suited to be solved in different visualizations. As for instance, it's easier to annotate cracks and regions in the 2D visualization and uh, the 3D domain is more suitable for geological analysis. The colors you can see here are the deviations 
of the excavated surface to the planned concrete tunnel shell. So in conclusion, high resolution data usually comes with the requirement of interaction. It's typically not enough to just have high performance visualization. Also, one might think about combining different data modalities to suit different tasks at hand. Unfortunately, I had to skip several interesting topics as part of my work, as there are collaboration, storytelling, and the support for reproducing scientific analysis results. In conclusion, abstraction on workflow, visualization, and data can bridge a distance of 63 million kilometers, allowing users to walk railways on Earth and also to roam around the Martian surface. I hope you enjoyed this talk, and for more information, please contact us or visit our homepage.